This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Amya Saleh and Hany Balkis. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Future Talk right here on Pulse95. It is a sunny afternoon right here in the heart of Sharjah, and you're listening to Future Talk, the one and only place where we bring you the latest in robotics, artificial intelligence, gadgets, and applications. All that you need to know about what's happening in the tech world, in the UAE, and around the world is being brought to you right here on Pulse95. Big news happening in space, because today we're going to be talking about SpaceX launching four astronauts to the International Space Station. But back here on Earth, lots is happening when it comes to iPhone drama because privacy activists are actually reaching out to the European Union to file complaints over the iPhone tracking our movement. So we're definitely going to be giving you all the details on how safe it is to use our own cell phones. But let's talk a little bit about weird things happening in the tech world because South Korea just showcased a drone taxi. Now, this is definitely not one of the first times we've talked about flying taxis, but drones moving humans, that's definitely a brand new one. In the world of apps, Macintosh is making headlines because the brand new OS update, the Big Sur, has been breaking some older MacBook Pro models. These models can't handle how strong the Big Sur update is. And this is exactly why we're going to be giving you a full review on all of its latest uh, details. In the Gadget of the Day segment, we're going to be telling you about a brand new headphone that can place music in your ears. No need to put any type of bulky headset or even AirPods because brand new devices are coming to town. Lots and lots is going to be discussed today on Future Talk. So keep Pulse 95 locked and we'll be right back. Daily digital news. Bits and bytes connect our world. Your quick roundup of everything that is happening in the tech world in the UAE and around the world. We're going all the way to space today to talk a little bit about the space race that has been happening. I think it's it started earlier last year and it's been ongoing ever since then. But today we're talking about a big accomplishment that the SpaceX crew have achieved because four astronauts were successfully launched on the SpaceX Crew Dragon Resilience. Now that's the name of the spacecraft and it is heading all the way to the International Space Station. This is the first of what the United States hopes will be many routine missions following the successful test flight in late spring. Now the three Americans are named Michael Hopkins, Victor Glover and Shannon Walker and they are all on their way to the International Space Station. So the spacecraft actually uh, launched yesterday at 7.27 p.m. from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And this basically ends almost a decade of international reliance on Russia for rides on its Soyuz rockets. And this basically means that the U.S. can now create its very own spacecraft to head to outer space. U.S. President-elect Joe Biden hailed the launch on Twitter as a testament to the power of science and what they can accomplish by harnessing innovation and determination and we've all seen how different countries have actually all started to become more interested in the space race biggest country is the the united arab emirates as well as the united states Uh, the united arab emirates actually launched the hope probe back in july and we are actually expecting it to arrive to the red planet in february of 2021 but this capsule that the u.s launched using its very own spacecraft has successfully separated from the second stage of the rocket and according to a SpaceX team member this has achieved the nominal orbit insertion which basically means that the capsule is currently on the right trajectory to reach the International Space Station. The crew will dock at their destination at around 11 p.m., uh, hopefully tonight, joining two Russians and one American that are currently on board the station. And they'll be staying in the International Space Station for about six months. Now, the capsule is very similar in shape to the spacecraft that preceded the space shuttle. And uh, at the end of its mission, this space shuttle will actually deploy its parachute and splash down in the water just as it did back in the Apollo area in the Apollo era which basically means that we are looking on very minimal space waste and that is definitely great news as we are trying to keep our outer space as sustainable as possible but let's move on to talk a little bit about what is happening with iPhone because it is definitely facing a lot of privacy breaches privacy activists in the European Union are filing many complaints 
over iPhone tracking. And this is not the first time we've heard of this happening, but definitely not the last time. The Vienna based group that is currently short for none of your business did add on Monday that it has asked da- data protection authorities in Germany and Spain to go ahead and examine the legality of Apple's tracking codes. These codes are known as IDFA or Identifier for Advertisers, which is basically very similar to the cookies that many websites use to store information on user behavior. This group did say that uh, the iOS operating system tends to create very unique codes for each iPhone that allows Apple and other third parties to identify users across applications and even connect online and mobile behavior. Yes, now we do know that the purpose for them taking those data is to sell to advertisers and even share their information to data brokers. Mm -hmm. Now, not a lot of people know that the term data brokers, you know, the stock brokers. Yeah. Data brokers is now a new term in 2020. And actually, they founded uh, a privacy activist and lawyer whose name goes by the name Mark Max Schemes, mm-hmm. who had fled numer- uh, filed numerous cases against major tech companies, yeah. including one even against Facebook that recently led the European Union's top court to even strike down an agreement that does allow companies to transfer data to the U.S., over snooping concerns. Yes, indeed. Now, many of you may be wondering, how did Apple respond to that? Did they acknowledge their mistake and send an apology? But knowing Apple, they definitely didn't do that. They dismissed the claims that were coming from this privacy, from these privacy activists, and they said that they were factually inaccurate and that they look forward to making that clear to all the privacy regulators should they examine the complaint. Now, the EU has been doing a lot against Apple. Yes. If we look at their chargers, their privacy, now, with the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 coming out, obviously, mm. we do know that we're not going to get that power brick yes. when we buy a new iPhone. But in France, for example, those they power are. bricks are coming out because the EU is doing a lot of sanctions and stra- restraints mm-hmm. on Apple and on the iPhone maker because they do believe that it shouldn't be monopolized the way it is, especially the way that Apple is doing it. And not only with Apple, we see the EU targeting Apple. We Mm. see the EU targeting Samsung, Huawei. The EU in general, when it comes to mobile phones, it comes to data and privacy, they are doing their best to combat it and not let these big companies have so much control. That's why they're always targeting Facebook as well. Absolutely. And we all know that the main aim behind uh, the European Union, especially these privacy activists that have filed their complaints, is to protect the privacy of users. A lot of us use our iPhones and very valuable information is embedded within it so we definitely don't want other third party uh, advertisers to have control over our information but sadly this has been the reality let us know your thoughts do you know that your phone is tracking you and do you know that your phone is listening to your conversations uh, share your thoughts with us at 4215 do it this a lot or sign into our dms at pulse 95 radio but coming up what do we have in store today coming up we're talking about how south korea is showcasing a drone taxi now ladies and gentlemen <laughs> every day we come on future talk and we bring you something crazier and crazier keep pulse 95 locked we'll be right back Check this out this Ladies and gentlemen, on Future Talk, we do bring you the craziest and the coolest things that can be happening in the tech world. But let's talk about a revolutionary flying drone taxi <laughs> that hovers 150 feet above the South Korean capital of the Seoul River to show what it can do. But the question of the hour, ladies and gentlemen, was would you feel safe in this drone? Now, South Korea did offer a glimpse of a science fiction future with a demonstration flight of a two-seat drone taxi in Seoul as the government did outline ambitious plans to commercialize urban air travel by 2025. Now, Omnia, Mm. did you know that I believe two days ago, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson did sign a, a, a decree that says by 2030, there will be no sale of petrol or diesel vehicles I'm not in the sur- UK. I'm not surprised because we recently talked about uh, the autonomous vehicle cargo that they're already starting to use to deploy and to send medication. So it only makes sense that they're definitely moving towards future mobility. But in the event that South Korea actually launched this interesting flying drone that could also become our own taxi, uh, they named it eVTOL, which basically stands for electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle and it carries a payload of about 485 pounds but 
here, this honey, it can reach speeds up to 80 miles per hour. And it basically is loaded with heavy sacks of rice instead of passengers for the flight. And this is only for the testing period. Once it's officially launched, it will be carrying normal human beings within its seats. But the demonstration was actually hosted uh, by the Seoul city government and South Korea's Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport. And it was basically showcasing how South Korea deals with air traffic and how it manages the system if this drone were to be deployed. Yes, now, uh, what we did ask the, the listeners a couple yeah. of minutes ago, would they feel safe? Now, I don't, want, I don't feel safe anymore, Omnia. <laughs> Because uh, instead of testing it with humans, they used rice. Yeah, that's a good option. They should have used humans to kind of gain my trust. But the event also did feature demonstrations of several smaller unmanned package delivery drones. Now, uh, the vice minister of the the, the Ministry of Land and uh, Traffic did say in a statement that the government has created a comprehensive urban air mobility roadmap to achieve the commercialization by 2025 without any disruptions through collaboration with industry, academia, and even research institutes. So obviously, they're having everyone focus on this. So by 2025, so let's say four years, because we're already going into 2021, we're going to see air travel in North and South Korea become commercialized. Absolutely. But a lot of us may be wondering, okay, it is very cool to talk about flying taxis. Fantastic to have drones be used. But what does this mean when it comes to speed? Well, aerial drones can definitely slash travel times on trips within the city of South Korea, Seoul by up to 70%. So can you imagine how much faster you will reach to any of your destinations? And whenever we're talking about a journey from any part of the city of Seoul to the international airport in South Korea, it will basically take less than 20 minutes. Mm. On the other hand, if you were to drive by car, that journey would take you over one hour. Yes, I mean, now we're talking about taxis. So obviously taxis do come with a fee and with a price. Now, they are projecting that a drone taxi fare for the 30-mile trip could be nearly $100. So we're talking about 365 dirhams, which is more than twice the cost of a taxi mm. ride in normally if you're getting into a car taxi. Yeah. However, as the market grows and autonomous flight systems are increasingly adopted, the fare could even drop to less than $20. So we're saying around 70 dirhams around that, around that marketplace. Mm. So from 365 dirhams to 70 dirhams, and you're jumping. I mean, when we talk about flying, flying is a luxury. It is. When you're saying, I'm going for a flight, I'm, I'm in a helicopter. Oh, I just came from, uh, let's say, uh, a jet plane, a jet yeah. ride. So when we're talking about flight, flight, we do expect it to be expensive. That's number one. Mm. And number two, luxurious. So I want to see how we are modernizing uh, the, uh, the flight and air transport in 2025 and if any countries will follow in their footsteps. 100%. And I think the main uh, the main question behind deploying such drones, apart from will the government actually create all the ethical laws so that it can actually operate safely, will customers actually trust flying in mm. such a drone? And uh, the industry will simply be getting future passengers comfortable with the idea of soaring over congested cities, mm. congested cities in flying drones mm. before officially mm. deploying them everywhere. Now, flying vehicles are also expected to be a big business globally in the coming decades. Now, they did project that the global market for autonomous urban aircrafts could reach $1.5 trillion by 2040. So that's a huge market. So, uh, I mean, we're seeing at all aspects, business-wise, is good for the business. Uh, Economy-wise, is good for the economy. Environmental-wise, it's good for the economy. Yeah. So, uh, for, for the environment. So we're looking at all good aspects. There's a lot of pros, and yet we have yet to see any cons. Yes, indeed. But let us know your thoughts. Our text lines are open for 215. Do it to Salat or sign into our DMs at Pulse95 Radio. Would you trust flying in a flying drone and would you feel safe enough to move from one destination to the other even if you're not traveling across countries but within the same city and without a pilot as well as it is unmanned yes it is an autonomous uh, drone so you got to take that into account slide into our dms and text us in at 4215 but coming up we have lots and lots to share with you all and we have the big talk of the hour, Mac OS, the Big Sur update. Are you with it or are you against it? Have you faced any issues? We're going to be discussing all that in just a few moments. Pulse 95. Apps all around. What's worth a click and download? Pulse 95.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you own an older MacBook Pro model, well, we have some news for you. And unfortunately, it's not the best news. <laughs> Now, a large number of late 2013 and 2014 13-inch MacBook Pro owners are even reporting that the Mac OS Big Sur update is bricking their machine. So what bricking means is basically it's making it unusable and just a brick, literally yeah. a brick. You cannot use it, you cannot tap into it or nothing. Now, a rumor did contain a significant number of users reporting the issue. And similar problems are even being reported across different platforms of social media and even Apple support communities suggesting the problem is widespread and active. Absolutely. Now, the Big Sur update is definitely one of the biggest updates uh, to MacBook Pros, and it makes the MacBook Pro become very similar to how you would use your iPhone, especially if you went ahead and downloaded the iOS 14 update. Users, though, with older MacBook Pro models have definitely reported many struggles with this update. Some of them have basically stated that their machines are left unusable after downloading this update. They were stuck with a black screen display. Others uh, have faced issues like having their laptop constantly become on safe mode, uh, being completely inaccessible after they tried to install the update, and they have no way to get past that black screen that leaves their laptop basically unusable. Yeah, and one actually one person uh, on social media did say that they were told by Apple support to book their MacBook Pro in for a repair. Mm. Another person on Apple support thread did say that the issue has been escalated to Apple's engineering team, so not a regular uh, Apple mechanic can fix it. So Apple should now be aware of the problem. Now, when Apple is aware of the problem, hopefully uh, there will be kind of a lot of big things done to fix the issue. For now, it is unclear. It is clear what actually may be causing the issue, and Apple will release a fix. Now, late 2013 and mid-2014 13-inch MacBook Pros may wish to hold off installing the new update, which is the Mac OS Big Sur. So yes. you do have... A, uh, a, a 2013 or 2014 13-inch MacBook, don't download the new update for the MacBook Pros because obviously there is a lot of problems going in with it. Now, I had my iPhone bricked uh, a couple of years ago. I think mm. it was the iPhone 6. I had the iPhone 6 brick. Mm. And uh, the thing was, Omnium, I took it to repair a repair shop right here in Sharjah. Mm. So it wasn't the official Apple uh, Apple repair Apple store. store. Yeah. And I took it to repair it and uh, they changed my, my, uh, my home button. And once they change my home button, Omnia, the phone is a different phone. Oh, it doesn't God. recognize each other. It went to total brick, and I had to pay around 1,200 dirhams to get a, 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 a replacement. So uh, don't take it to any third-party uh, fixers or mechanics. Wait for, uh, for Apple to release a statement, or even better, go to the Apple Store and see what can be done. Now, let's talk about the review on the Mac OS Big Sur review. Now, it is the other half of the Max 2020 Rebirth. Now, actually, I haven't downloaded it yet on my MacBook Pro, but Omnia has it downloaded. And let me tell you guys, it looks like a whole different software. It looks like a whole different operating system. And, and yeah. I like it a lot. And it's interesting that you mentioned that because Apple has even announced that this is by far the biggest leap forward in their design ever since the Mac OS X was launched almost 20 years ago. So it's basically the rebirth of Mac OS once again. And this is one of the main reasons why Apple has finally decided to call this the Mac OS 11 because it is basically the newest look and feel to your operating system. Now, the dock uh, of your MacBook, once you download this update, will feel basically just like the dock on the iPhone or even the iPad. Yes, now, uh, I actually like to look at reviews a lot of the iPad Pros, even though I don't yeah. need an iPad Pro. I like to <laughs> you look have a at Kindle, you have an Apple Watch, yeah, I, I, iPhone. I like to look at gadgets. I like to see the market. Now, yeah. looking at the iPad Pro and looking at Omnia's laptop, which is the MacBook Pro, they have the same type of uh, operating system. It looks mm. the same, It looks, but obviously this is a laptop. What I'm trying to speculate is just uh, something um, I'm saying on the top of my head, that soon enough, Apple wants us to get used to using this iOS. Mm. So if we have to transfer or move into iPads, it's going to be easier and quicker because we do know that iPads and tablets are the new laptop future. And a lot of big tech companies have been pushing for this for years now. Hey, you don't need a laptop anymore. You can use an iPad. Hey, with a keyboard and the we'll whole- We'll give you a keyboard. Yeah. And some third party uh, manufacturers like Logitech yeah. even came out with keyboards and even mouses 
for your iPad. And uh, I mean, I, the iPad Pro it looks amazing. It I like does. it. But it's for, very sleek. For me, for me, I don't feel like I want that. Uh, I don't have enough control over the, co- mm. the, the, the the tablet. So if something I don't have enough control over, I won't opt for it. So what I'm trying to speculate again is that I that Apple is trying to say, hey, listen, move to the iPad. See what the iPad can offer because it's the same operating system. So if you have an Apple and Apple Omnia, you wouldn't care which which Apple you took a bite of because both of them are the same. I definitely agree with you on that one. And I also agree that the iPad is just, it's not everyone's cup of tea, at least not mine. But let's talk a little bit about the features that the Big Sur has been bringing that have made a lot of people happy. First off, it has the similar widget style that we tend to find on the iOS 14. But also, it comes with a control center, which is the favorite of many on the iOS for iPhones. So this will basically allow you to swipe down from the upper right corner for easy access to the airplane mode, the volume, brightness, Wi-Fi, and a bunch of other buttons that you can customize. So this is similar uh, on the MacBook as well, because on the upper right hand corner of the screen, right next to where it showcases the time, you can also find very similar features. The Mac version of Control Center, however, does not have nearly as many options as the iOS version yet, but this is definitely a great start. Another big feature that was imported uh, from the iOS, as I've mentioned, is the widget, but again, it doesn't have as much customization as the iOS 14 on your iPhone. Yes, and what I like is it does look much simpler and does give you that tablet a phone feel, yeah. which is very important because a lot of people don't know how to use Macs. They, mm. they're, they're used to Windows and I, a, a lot of us are used to Windows. Windows computers are the first operating system that most of us got our hands on. And it's interesting that you mentioned that because anytime someone wants to purchase their first MacBook Pro, it'll take them some time yes. to learn how to use yes. it. If you've never had a MacBook before, you will know it was one of the toughest transitions to mm. do from Windows. So I'm guessing that by having the Mac uh, Big Sur become a lot similar to the iOS 14, this may mm. just encourage more people to become more involved in using the entire Apple ecosystem rather than just buying the iPhone and having a Windows computer. Now, now Omnia, I don't know if you know many people like this, but mm. I know a lot of people, Omnia, as soon as Apple will announce a new product, yeah. even if they have the 2018 model or 2019 model, they'll go and buy the brand new the brand new product. Yeah. I already know Omnia, a person. I'm not going to say his name. I know it's a person. Yeah. He is a huge Apple fan. He's, <laughs> he's bigger than me. And he does a lot when it comes to app developing for Apple yeah. and uh, for the iOS. He already bought, he already ordered the M1 chip MacBook. Which I, I was asking Hany this weekend, like, oh, yeah. how do we get it? He already pre <laughs> Totally forgot it's not even out yet. He already pre-ordered the M1 chip. He mm. already got the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Mm. And he already got the Apple Watch 6 Series. Anything new, he brings it and he buys it. So I sometimes, I get my hands on these type of gadgets and I, and I look at them. And let me tell you. It's it, it's kind of bad that that you want to upgrade even though you have the brand new the, the latest model, but let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the M the the, the iPhone 12 Pro is amazing. I, I I've, I've I've touched it and I felt it a whole different feel, and that's what I like about Apple in general. Every time they bring something new, it might look similar, but, but it's the not feel the same. is something else. Absolutely, and I definitely see uh, how beautiful it is to go back to the square shape of the iPhone 12. So uh, let us know if you've got your hands on the iPhone. 12 have you purchased purchased it right away the minute it was out but also let us know do you enjoy using the big sur update on the mac os personally so far i really yeah. like it mm. only issue is some softwares are just not uh, optimized yet yeah for- they haven't op- been optimized yet to basically be usable with this update now i haven't downloaded it yet but i've touched i've i've used the omnia's laptop yesterday i believe and i liked it a lot and i still have an update i think i'm gonna update tonight Finally. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm excited to update. I'm, I want to see what happens, but I'm a little bit nervous. Why? Because of, of the bugs. Yeah, of the of there the aren't bugs so far. Of the bugs, because it's different with you, Omnia. Because your Why? your your laptop came with it. No, you I had, had to you, update. You have to update. Yeah. All right, I'm updating right now then. <laughs> so let us know your thoughts if you've updated it yet. Uh, 4215, our text lines are always open. Do or just a lot or sign into our DMs at Pulse95 Radio. Coming up, we are going to be talking about, I think, one of the most interesting gadgets that we have seen so far. A new device that puts music in your ears with no need for headphones or headset. Keep Pulse95 locked. We'll be right back. <laughs> Gadget of the day. New tech you might want to play with. Pulse 95. Today we're talking about a new gadget that 
Honestly, to me, it sounds like it's coming straight out of a sci-fi movie, but it is reality and it basically will have or will create the effect of having music beaming straight into your head. Yes, now imagine a world where you move around in your own personal sound bubble. Now you can listen to your favorite tunes, play loud computer games, even watch a movie or get navigation directions in your car, all without disturbing those around you. Now that's the possibility presented by sound beaming, which is a new futuristic audio technology from Novoto Systems. Now on Friday, we'll debut a desk device that beams sound directly to a listener without the need of headphones. So are you understanding what we're talking about? We're talking about no headphones, no speakers, sound beaming it directly into your head. Yes, indeed. Now, a lot of people may be, you know, like astonished by the concept. How will you have sound beaming in your head if there is nothing transferring this music? And this is exactly uh, what was the reaction of many researchers working on this device. But the listening sensation, even though it sounds like coming, it's coming straight out of a sci-fi movie, it is actually mm. real. Mm. And what creates this impact is the 3D sound that is so close to you that it feels like it's coming right out of your head. It's like, you know when you have a song stuck in your head and mm. you're humming it? That's mm. kind of basically the same sensation it's going to give you. Now, what I'm thinking about as soon as, uh, as, soon as I, he I heard this story, what I thought about was, let's say, for example, I have a, a, an audio clip. Let's yeah. say I'm saying, hey, you there, come here, right? Or I'm saying, okay. So, and I beam that sound to someone and they're not aware that this device, this sound beaming device is in the room. And I'm just beaming the, to it. And I'm like, hey, I'm your second conscience. Oh, God. I'm finally here, right? Go get me a glass of water. Go get Hanny a glass of water. Why does this sound like it's coming right for, like it's an like, episode from you? It's, it's like it's like it's <laughs> the like show you a drama movie, a horror movie. It that, is a horror movie that you're talking that's about. That's what I'm saying. So so it, I am I'm imagining things now because if this type of technology the general public can have, what if someone like a crazy scientist <laughs> wants to create this type of technology and start beaming people to do things? Now imagine Omnia, you're driving in your car, all of a sudden you hear it, take a left. Take a left. Take a left. Taking a left. Take right. a left. It's like, like it's like when the assistant from uh, Google Maps keeps telling you, take a left, take a left. Yeah. Keep left, keep left. It's like, okay, but I got the idea, Google. It's not a robot voice. No, it's a it's real a, it's human. A real, it's a real human voice telling you to do things that you wouldn't want to do. And you're not aware <laughs> that there's a sound beaming device coming into your head. Absolutely. But let's talk a little bit about the practical uses. Away They're, away from horror movies, because I think Kanye is... is have you watched any horror movie recently? No, but I mean, that's what my imagination went to uh, directly. But the company does expect the device to have plenty of practical uses, just like Omnia said, from allowing office workers to listen to music or even conference calls without interrupting colleagues to letting someone play a game, movie, or even music without disturbing the people in their houses. Yes, indeed. Now, this is definitely going to be one of the best uses for such a device, especially if you are working in an office where you like to play music and sometimes music can still be heard even if you have a headset on. So the lack of headphones means that it is possible to also hear other sounds in the room very clearly. So you're not going to feel like uh, you're basically isolated from the rest of the world. But that also brings another point to question. Is it going to be noise cancelling? Mm. So how good or how efficient is this way of playing music? Because I hate whenever you're listening to a song and you can hear, you know, the sirens of the ambulance outside or you can hear the kids screaming because then like it defeats the whole purpose of having music in your ears. Yeah. Now, now Omnia, something else that comes to mind. Let's say you're in a cinema, mm. right? And you have all these sound beaming devices on the top of the screen and just beaming it into the people and while they're watching a movie because sometimes people have hard it's hard for people to hear mm. and not only that but give them a sound button like a volume Ooh, control yes give to them, see how how loud you want how it to loud be. you want it and that's the way it gives more comfort to the person that's watching the movie or even better let's talk about concerts oh my god that's the, gonna the, be life-changing it changes a lot of things i mean with this type of technology it is revolutionary in the sense of really you can change the way you listen to music and even the way you use entertainment absolutely and another great feature about it is that you don't need to tell the device where you are you know the device will basically stream to your head wherever you are whenever you are so so so, the, so the question is omnium let's mm. say for example the beam is going into a straight line. Yeah. Right? Straight line is going to Omnia's head. It's following head. you. It's following you. It goes into your straight head, into your brain. <laughs> okay. Right? And I come and I stand in front of you. Yeah. 
Will I then get the sound? Oh, that's a nice question. I have no clue, honestly. Yeah. They didn't announce that yet. So, so imagine that. Like my creativity right now, my imagination, imagination is going crazy. So, do so you think say, it would transfer from one person to the yeah, other? Yeah, like I cut, I cut off the connection, like the wavelength. Mm. Like you're talking right now, and then all of a sudden I come in and I'm talking to the person you're talking to. It's or like listen to the music you're listening to. That's definitely an interesting question. I'd want to know because that and, means. And what if I want to share audio with you, Omnia? Oh, that I believe you can still do that. So, I mean, endless possibilities. I, I love this type of technology. I mean, it's crazy to see how we're looking at sound beaming uh, music, audio in general. Let us know your guys' thoughts. 4215, or on our Instagram, at Pulse95Radio. Would you opt for a sound beaming type of device in your home, in your car, or in your general life when you're doing anything? 4215, or on our Instagram, at Pulse95Radio. I personally would want a device like that. Omnia. Me too. You should only would want that device. We need to guys we need to know your guys' thoughts. 4215 slots. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, we're jumping in our spacecraft and going all the way to space. Yes, indeed. Coming up on Pulse 95 is the afternoon karak with Mikhail Atiyah. He's gonna be giving you all you need to know about what's happening in the entertainment industry, all the gaming news, as well as movie reviews. You can expect that to come on the show from 4 to 5 p.m. We'll see you once again tomorrow. Same time, same place, only here on Pulse 95. If you liked this episode of Future Talk, drop a like and subscribe. Pulse 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.